Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Right today, I'm going to look at every Premier League club's current player who was written off too soon. Let's go. Arsenal, Martin Odegaard. Right, I'm bending the rules here slightly as Martin Odegaard was written off years before he joined Arsenal, but with the way his career's gone, I couldn't ignore him. Ouch, this doesn't look good. But to be fair to Mickey Drippin, Martin Odegaard's stock was so high when he first emerged that it was nigh on impossible to live up to the heights. With ludicrous wages and loan move after loan move, it was no wonder that people wrote him off as if he was the second coming of Freddie Adu. But in 2021, Odegaard has proven that the doubters were wrong. His time at Real Sociedad probably changed his career, and while it wasn't enough to get him in the Real Madrid first team, it got him to move to Arsenal on loan where I'm damn excited to see him play. Sadly for Odegaard, it doesn't look like he's the generational talent that some tip him to be. Christ, I still remember signing him on Football Manager 2015 on a free transfer when he was 35 years old and handing him 300 grand a week just so I could sell a few shirts. But I suppose that's better than what Real Madrid reportedly want to do with Odegaard, who want to keep him at the club as an attempt to lure Erling Haaland to the Bernabeu. Christ, this can be Ronaldo and Cohen try all over again. Aston Villa, Jack Grealish. I always hate picking Jack Grealish when I get the Villa on any video, as it looks like I don't know any other Villa players. Honestly, I swear I do, but I don't think anyone was writing John McGinn off after he thundered home that outrageous volley against Sheffield Wednesday. But as for Jack Grealish, I know fine well that I wrote him off in the past. When he first properly emerged back when Villa were fighting off relegation with the likes of Mika Richards and Adama Traore, I just thought Jack Grealish was a cocky kid with floppy hair, really small socks, no end product, and a desire to live his best life on the Magaluf Strip. But in 2021, he's emerged as the Villa Talisman, a role he's been fulfilling since the promotion back to the Premier League. He's still got floppy hair, still got small socks, and probably still wishes he was dancing in MAGA right now, but he's got end product, and should probably be a starter for Gareth Southgate at the Euros. Brighton, Robert Sanchez. Hands up if you wrote off Robert Sanchez this season. Stop lying to yourself, yes you did. I know I definitely did. I couldn't understand why on earth Graham Potter binned off a safe pair of hands in Matty Ryan in favour of a bloke who was spending last season on loan at Rochdale. Yet here we are and Matty Ryan is trying to scratch the initials MO off the Arsenal bench while Robert Sanchez has proved he's more than up to the task at the Amex. Which is brilliant news because I bet he's dead cheap on fantasy football. Burnley, Nick Pope. When Nick Pope came on for his Premier League debut back in 2017 to replace the injured Tom Heaton, I didn't expect to be seeing a future England goalkeeper. Tom Heaton had been so reliable, so watching him be replaced by a gaudy looking kid who looked more interested in The Legend of Zelda seemed like a recipe for disaster. Little did I know that Pope would go on to become one of the Premier League's most reliable goalkeepers, a man who some think should replace Jordan Pickford in Gareth Southgate's starting eleven. Chelsea, Marcus Alonso. The bloke's like a bloody cockroach. Just when you think he's done for, he climbs out the woodwork and returns to the starting eleven. I don't rate Marcus Alonso, he does nothing for me. Defensively he's reliable as a banged up Vauxhall Corsa and the only thing he's got going for him is a wicked free kick which I don't think we've seen since 2017. When Ben Chilwell arrived at Stamford Bridge, I never thought we'd see Alonso again, not even in a pointless Carabao Cup game away to Grimsby. Yet now Thomas Tuckle's rocked up looking like a creepy James Bond villain and now Marcus Alonso's Chelsea's number one left wing back. I'll be 50 one day and still Marcus Alonso will be clinging on to life at Chelsea, returning to the team after Frank Lampard's latest sacking. Crystal Palace, Wilfried Zaha. He's the obvious pick, but that move to Man United almost threatened to finish him off. When Zaha returned to Palace, he had to basically rebuild his career, and he did that with absolute ease. He went from David Moyes' banter boy to Crystal Palace talisman in a blink of an eye, and it's actually a bit disappointing that he hasn't got a bigger move to prove just how much he's improved since Fergie brought him to Old Trafford. Everton, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Considering their team is a mishmash of Real Madrid and Barcelona flops, Everton have got a fair few players who have been written off. I mean, Hammers Rodriguez's career was dead to rights shortly after that World Cup Golden Boot, as it became quickly apparent that he couldn't score goals like that volley against Uruguay each and every week. But for Everton players written off too quickly, I'm going to look at Dominic Calvert Lewin. When he was spending his days standing up top, failing to even register a shot on target, there were a fair few Everton fans questioning why he was even at Goodison Park. But in the past 12 months, something's clicked into gear for Calvert Lewin, who has gone from timid striker to a Duncan Ferguson mini me who throws his weight around and scores goals, all the while sporting an audacious man bun. Fulham, Adam Ola Luckman. I don't like to keep talking about it, but that penalty could have been a turning point for Adam Ola Luckman. He was back in the Premier League after a failed spell in the Bundesliga, with all the pressure in the world to prove that he wasn't just an overhyped flashy winger. The nubby steps and dinks a tepid Penenka into the desperate arms of Lucas Fabianski. He'd cost Fulham a point, at a time where Fulham's best chances of getting points was speeding through red lights on the bus home. He was branded immature, a liability, yet right now I'd say he's Fulham's most dangerous player and will have a big role to play if Scott Parker's side eventually stay up. Leeds United, Patrick Bamford. 
Christ, Patrick Bamford's the poster boy for being written off too soon. The poor lad's been written off his entire career. But particularly over the past 12 months, he's felt the wrath of fans, pundits, YouTubers, literally anyone with an opinion who didn't think Patrick Bamford could do a job in the Premier League for Leeds. To be fair to the doubters, the evidence was there for all to see. In the Championship, he needed about 10 chances to score. And was he really going to get those opportunities against someone like Virgil van Dijk? Well, Bamford proved us all wrong immediately with that goal against Liverpool. And from that moment on, he's never looked back. Leicester City, Jamie Vardy. If you thought Leicester had pulled off a deal that would propel them to promotion, safety, the Premier League title and the Champions League back in 2012 when they paid £1 million to Jamie Vardy from non-league Fleetwood Town, then you're absolutely lying to yourself. When they came up to the Premier League, it looked like the biggest goal threat was going to be David Bloody Nugent. Yet now Vardy's recognised as a Leicester legend, one of the Premier League's best ever strikers and probably the best signing in the Foxes' history. Liverpool, Andy Robertson. This man probably thought he'd won the lottery when Jurgen Klopp phoned him up to say he was bringing him to Liverpool. It was like a carbon copy of those weird postcode lottery adverts where Jeff Brazy just keeps turning up at people's houses with oddly sized checks. Robertson had just been relegated with Hull for a second time, yet was brought into Liverpool to take the place of Alberto Moreno. It was a bold move by the Reds, who seemed to be going for a cheap option rather than forking out for an established star, which is what they needed because of how bad Moreno was. I mean, James Milner ended up playing left back for goodness sake. Robertson was written off because of his past, yet now he's one of the best left-backs in world football and another wonderful example of Klopp taking players to another level. Manchester City, Kevin De Bruyne Never forget that before he even kicked a ball in a Man City shirt, Kevin De Bruyne was written off by Paul Merson and Phil Thompson on Soccer Saturday. And there's being wrong, then there's being so wrong you wonder if it was all part of some elaborate prank. And these people are paid for their opinions. I mean, I know I get paid here, but come on, if you think I'm getting the same kind of bunts as Sky Sports Edition out, then you're mad. Unsurprisingly, De Bruyne was worth the £55 million that Man City spent. Chelsea were wrong to get rid of him, and he's now the best player in the Premier League today. And no people in the comments, I'm not forgetting about Bruno Fernandes. Manchester United, Fred. Christ, I feel like this whole Man United team's been written off too soon. I mean, I remember back in the day when David De Gea was getting bullied on crosses in the piss and rain, as if it was that scene out of goal where Santiago Munez turns up for his trial. But it's Fred who I'm going to focus on, as he's had quite the comeback in a Man United shirt. The man's like Rebecca Black trying to banish the memory of Friday Friday, gotta get down on Friday. From a bull in a china shop sprinting around aimlessly with no rhyme or reason, Fred is now a mainstay in the Man United team, who defuses the other team while starting his own attacks from deep. I never saw it coming at all, and to be honest, I thought they might as well have just got the other Fred who looks like he runs a kebab shop. You know, the one that went to the World Cup weirdly in 2014. Newcastle United, Miguel Almiron. I don't think Toon fans ever wrote off Miguel Almiron, but the noises outside the northeast were that he was just a whippet with no football and brain. It took Almiron a long time to break his Newcastle duck, but now he's one of the more lethal attackers in black and white, especially when Bruce plays him in his most natural position. I mean, it's no wonder he's struggling out on the right. It's as if Bruce wanted to become the next Iron Robin, but he might as well just had you seeing Bolt aimlessly running up and down the touchline. At least that would have sold a few shirts. Sheffield United, Chris Basham. After last season, I could have picked any Sheffield United player. Literally every member of that squad proved us all wrong. This season, not so much. But anyway, the man I'm going to look back at is Chris Basham. I know on the whole I've looked at more recent examples of players being written off, but back when he was 16, Chris Basham was released by Newcastle United. The man started working in McDonald's. That's no slight on working in Matty D's, there's nothing wrong with that, but to go from being a potential Premier League player to flipping burgers, it's quite the fall from grace. But Basham didn't quit, and more than 10 years later he's proven that he was in fact good enough to be in the Premier League after all, and he made a crack and chicken legend. Southampton, Yannick Vestergaard When Yannick Vestergaard arrived at Southampton, I was excited. He was an absolute dream on FIFA, a powerhouse who stood at 7 feet tall as if he was the bloody big show. The early signs were pretty bleak though, as Vestergaard boasted a turning circle of a number 54 bus that goes from Middlesbrough to Hartlepool, a place where dreams go to die. Under Ralph Hasenhutl though, Vestergaard is much more improved and looks like a cultured centre-back who's comfortable in possession. And at least he wasn't involved in both 9-0 hammerings. Tottenham, Musa Sissoko. With the way he played at Newcastle, I'll never be fond of Musa Sissoko. And when he finished his first season at Spurs, I don't think they were fond of him either. He looked like an absolute waste of money, where the £30 million could have been spent on an extra few seats in the new stadium, or maybe in a nice new watch for Daniel Levy. But Sissoko fought hard to be respected in North London, and his defensive duties could no longer be overlooked. But where was this player at Newcastle? It was like watching an Aldi version of Patrick Vieira sometimes. West Brom, Sam Johnston. At one point in time, Sam Johnston was just a man United kid with more loan moves than saves. 
A lot of people probably never expected him to make it in the Premier League, but Johnson has proven this season what a top keeper he can be, and no matter what happens to the baggies, he's certainly proven that he's got a future in the Premier League. West Ham, Pablo Fornals. I thought this was an absolutely brilliant signing when it was announced, so when his first six or seven months passed with not even a whimper of skill or vision, I was pretty damn sad. He was branded as a waste of money, another example of poor investment from West Ham. But as time has passed, he started to contribute more and more in the final third, and while maybe he isn't as influential as I thought he'd be, at least no one's putting him in the same bracket as Sebastian Allaire anymore. And finally Wolves, Raul Jimenez. Right, when Wolves signed Raul Jimenez ahead of their Premier League return, I couldn't believe my eyes. This was a man who hadn't hit double figures in the league since arriving in Europe. I thought there was absolutely no chance that Wolves would score goals with this buffoon up top. Yet here we are now, and Wolves are pining for his return. Raul Jimenez splattered egg all over my face, as he scored goal after goal to prove he's actually one of the most complete strikers in the entire Premier League. And now, almost three months since that horrible night against Arsenal, Jimenez is back in training. What an absolute legend. So there we go, that's your current player who was written off too soon. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to HITC Sport. And until next time, we will see you around.